If I've said it once, I've said it a million times. I love 3D platformers. Whenever a new one comes out, I always snap at the chance to play it, and in today's case, that would be Effie. Developed by Inverge Games, this is a timed PS4 exclusive, but it is also coming to the PC later this year. Well, I say it's a 3D platformer. The press release and PlayStation blog call it that, but the official game website and PSN store listing both call it a 3D action adventure game instead. Why the discrepancy? Well, Effie has a bit of an identity crisis, with equal parts platforming, combat, and puzzle solving. At least that's the claim. In reality, it's only about 45% each platforming and combat, and only about 10% puzzles. Why the difficulty nailing down the genre? And is Effie any good? Let's find out together, by which I mean I already know and I'm going to tell you. Effie is structured like a fairy tale. The story is told by an old man named Galen to a little girl, the titular Effie. This serves as the framing device for the gameplay, so it all plays out like Prince of Persia Sands of Time, in retrospect, even down to the protagonist saying, no, that's not what happened, this is how it happened, whenever you die and restart. This adds an extra layer to a story that desperately needs more layers. You play as Galen on a quest to defeat an evil witch. He was a young man, but lazy and kind of a dick, so when one day a woman came to him asking for help fixing her cart, he refused. The woman turned out to be said evil witch and cursed him with old age for some reason. She then decided to step it up and take over the kingdom of Oblina, where the game takes place, so I feel Galland really messed up here. He seeks help from the Elders, a generic group of ancient gods who are all-knowing in magic and all that. They tell him they'll return him to his youth if he proves to them he has a kind heart. The test? Defeat the evil witch that cursed you and destroy her three gems of evil. It's a simplistic plot full of cliches like any fairy tale, and it's also one that doesn't make a whole lot of sense if you think about it for more than three seconds. If this witch was so powerful she could take over an entire kingdom by herself, why did she need help from some random dude to fix her cart? Why would the elders rely on a single lazy old man to save the world? And how does defeating a witch prove he has a kind heart? He's only doing it because you said you'd break the curse on him. That just proves he'll do anything to not die young, essentially. Also, why why, why are you asking him to prove that he is a kind heart anyway? What is... What, is, what does that have to do with anything? The game begins in the Temple of the Elders, and you have to make your way towards them. This section is old-fashioned 3D platforming, and it's alright. The camera does a great job of tracking you by itself, not getting stuck on objects or going into weird angles at random. It's also a breeze to control on your own. I never found myself getting stuck or dying because of an uncooperative camera, and that's crucial to a good 3D platformer. The jumping physics are also great. It feels a little heavy, but it's not too bad and you get used to it. When you do, platforming feels feels fast and fluid, and you can build some decent momentum traversing obstacles with the controls. The problem is, there's nothing unique here. It's stuff we've all seen from any 3D platformer. There's the same handful of traps and obstacles like rotating platforms, swinging blades, deadly water, falling objects, blah blah blah. This is remedied somewhat by your shield. Once you reach the elders, they give you the shield to help you on your quest. The elders must be fans of Captain America because this thing can do pretty much anything. Among its bag of tricks is both a double jump ability and a forward dash. This one's used perfectly in many platforming challenges, requiring you to perform the dash in mid-air, then jumping out of it to clear some obstacles. But that's the only ability you unlock in the whole game that'll add a wrinkle to the platforming, as the rest are all combat related. It's, it's a real disappointment and a shame that they didn't have more upgrades in the platforming that could have added so many more dimensions to it. And oh boy, that combat. You're ambushed by the Pac-Man ghosts when you first get the shield, and I was annihilated by these bastards in my first couple of tries. They'll swarm you one after another, depleting your health in seconds if you don't use the shield properly. The first time I was in combat, they just surrounded me and killed me without the game giving me any clue what was happening or what I was supposed to do. It was only on my third try that I discovered by pressing L1, you use your shield to create a force field around yourself that'll stop any attack. This force field uses your mana, but rather than mana ticking down over time, it's instead determined by how many hits you take, and it replenishes itself rather quickly. This means you can theoretically stay in your force field indefinitely, avoiding every attack until an enemy or enemies finish their animations. Then you can just pick them off once they've exhausted themselves. But there's the annoying thing. There's no interrupting enemy attacks or dodging, so once an enemy begins their attack animation, the the only way to avoid getting hit is putting your shield up quick enough, or running, 
or bashing out of its way. There are many times I was hit by an enemy that I was in the middle of attacking, which just doesn't really feel fair. Once you defeat the ghosts, you're free to go, but this is far from the last combat encounter. Enemies are scattered throughout each level, as is typical, but occasionally the game will throw ambushes at you too. They'll block off your path, forcing you to fight waves of enemies at a time. It's annoying, but it also kills any sense of flow and pacing the platforming. It feels like a lazy way to introduce challenge. Heck, it doesn't even feel like challenge, more like something to pan out playtime. There are additional shield abilities to pick up, like a boomerang type throw and this ground pound that damages whatever it is in front of you. As you'll notice throughout this video, there's no targeting or locking on to enemies. Your attacks kind of auto lock on when you get close. It's fine most of the time, but when fighting the ghosts that move super fast or these ranged enemies, it can be difficult to make contact. That's why I use the boomerang attack so much once I unlock it. There really should be some kind of lock on ability so you can reliably hit enemies without having to flail around at random. Ultimately though, combat comes down to mashing the light and heavy attack buttons or the boomerang button until everything is dead and you can move on. Combat's not terrible by any means, but it's certainly boring. They try to tie the combat into the platforming though with runes. These are basically your coins in Mario. They're super common and you grab them all the time. These are what give you XP, and with every level, you gain more health and mana. It's a good way of bringing platforming and combat together because some of these runes are well hidden. Plus, there are chests full of huge quantities all over. But being the collectaholic that I am, I went out of my way to get every rune I saw. So by halfway through the game, I was basically god. Enemies never killed me again, and I was able to spam my special abilities over and over again without ever really fearing losing too much mana. Another problem with these things is a lot of the time when you get these runes, Galen will say something like, Galen felt an urge within him, or that's more like it. And he does it all the time, which is so annoying. Galen felt an urge within him. <sighs> Galen felt much better now. In fact, that's kind of my key word with Effie, annoying. This game does a lot of small, annoying things that, on their own, aren't that big of a deal, but as a collective, it all grates on your nerves. For instance, there are mandatory subtitles. You can't turn them off. Not too bad, except for the fact that just about every other line is wrong, not matching with what the characters are saying. He had taken a hit and a tumble, but he survived the fall. Gallant had to reach the center of the hall. Malira had fled but the floor was still crumbling away. The game also blocks you off from some areas once you pass them, which makes 100% completion impossible if you miss something, unless you restart the whole game. Not that what you'd miss is all that important anyway. Unlike Super Mario Odyssey or Jack and Daxter, your objective isn't to collect key items to move to the next level. Effie is simply about getting from point A to point B and destroying Gem of Evil C. The big collectible here, relics, are entirely optional. All they do is give you some lore about some of the characters and worlds, and most of it's pretty bland. However, there is some key backstory about the witch that do make her interesting. Not interesting enough for me to remember her name, but adding that to the main story could have helped make her more sympathetic. Instead, I missed most of it because I didn't get all those relics. See, I missed a relic in the third level, and the game blocked me off from it, so I couldn't get it. From that point on, I just started ignoring relics. The game permanently locked me out from 100%ing the game, so why bother? It just removed any incentive for me to explore the levels of the big hub world, and that's just bad game design. Although when I was exploring, I found this random lever in the middle of nowhere that didn't do anything. That was neat. Speaking of destroying the Gems of Evil two paragraphs ago, you have to fight a boss before you can get to them. Each time it's the witch, but all the fights are different and are pretty varied. Well, the first two are identical, you just have to beat her minions and doing so hurts her somehow. But there's also this one at a level called Woodborne that's all about platforming. You have to move down this hallway full of conveyor belts and some saws and lava at the bottom. There are insta-death traps everywhere with the lava and some of the saws at the end, but other saw blades will simply push you into the lava too, which is fun. What's more fun is that you can cheese this fight somewhat. You're supposed to hit these levers that open gates to get to the next part, and they also activate the traps in the next room too. But you can jump on a log in the first part and use it to jump on this platform that lets you easily squeeze around the gate, letting you walk through the second area without any traps. Sadly, you can't get up to the platform in the second part and have to hit the lever, but still. Now, if you're still paying attention, you're probably wondering where the puzzles are. Well, they're here, sure, but they're so easy, so insignificant, and so few and far between, they're barely worth mentioning. 
Here's one where you have to step on some buttons in the right order. Here's one where you have to pull levers in the right order. And here's another one where you have to pull levers in the right order. Yeah, those are the kind of puzzles we're talking about here. There is some variety here, though not much. The big one is that you can ride your shield like a hoverboard in the hub world, but only in that hub world. Credit where credit's due, this place is gorgeous. It's a sea of these red plants and trees that give Oblina a distinct look. The whole game is pretty with this cartoony, almost cell shaded art style, underlining a beautiful use of color and wonderful fantasy world. You've got this grape juice level that's partly French Riviera and part sewer facility, a wood cutting world with a giant windmill and a creepy medieval ghost town, all of which is filled with these ancient decrepit ruins that occasionally act as side platforming challenges. The open world means you can complete the levels in whatever order you want, but there are only three main levels, so that freedom is kind of deflated somewhat. There's also the opening temple level and a couple of optional side areas, but that's it. The hoverboard controls are a real problem. It's okay when you're going in a straight line, obviously, but this thing has the turning radius of a cargo ship with a broken rudder. For general traversal, it's not too big a deal, but this is a 3D platformer, or at least some of it is, so there are side activities. One of these activities is, of course, a race on the hoverboard. This is by far the worst part of the game. You have to hit all the green checkpoints in the right order before time runs out. Because of the terrible turning radius of the board, you'll lose if you miss one, because it'll take too long to stop and turn around to go back for it. They're incredibly hard to hit, too, because they each give you a speed boost, so if you hit a couple in a row, you'll be blasting off like a rocket, making the controls super jittery. Doing a full turn might be heavy, but steering will make you look like the line on the EKG machine. But worst of all is that every time you hit something, you fall off your board. No matter how fast you're going, you'll stop dead in your tracks in an instant. But my favorite part is when you have to go over this area full of grape juice, which is deadly for some reason, and how if you fall off into the grape juice and die. There's this one part where I ran out of time just as I hit something and was in the air. The game froze while it asked me if I wanted to retry, and when I said yes, it unfroze, dropped me into the grape juice, and killed me. I then tried to restart the race over again, and I couldn't interact with the starting line anymore. I had to restart the game, and only then could I try again. But I did eventually beat the race, and do you want to know what I got? A single relic, and two chests full of runes. Oh boy, that was worth the trouble. That brings us smoothly into what could be Effie's greatest flaw. So far, Effie has just been kind of dull. A decent 3D platformer with boring combat, bad hoverboard controls, and meh puzzles. But I love 3D platformers, so I don't think it was too bad. Or at least I wouldn't have. You see, Effie might be part platformer, part action game, and part puzzler, but it is 100% buggy. For a start, the game runs terribly on a basic PS4. It was dropping frames constantly and chugging at an absurd rate whenever there are too many enemies on the screen, which seemed to be all the time. As far as glitches, I've already talked about a few, but there's this one glitch here early on when I touched the side of a slidey blot trap thing, and it pulled me into the wall and killed me. Here's a part during the boss fight in Woodbourne I talked about where I tried to jump this gap, clearly landed on the platform, yet fell off anyway for some reason. Then there's this bug that happened during the final boss fight where I fell over the side of a platform and my character froze. The death screen didn't enable and I was stuck there while the boss continued to attack me even though it had no effect. There's also this part here where I went to open a chest and the little music cue that happens whenever you open one of these just didn't happen. Yes. There's also this part here where the shield was fully extended as if in hoverboard mode even though it was on my back. It's supposed to retract when it goes on your back. It's a tiny bug for sure, but all those tiny bugs add up. Effie is just missing a lot, I think, and it could have benefited from more time in the oven. Aside from the bugs and poor performance, there are also little things that aren't there that should be. For example, there's no sound effects for the chest's opening. You just mash the circle button and it just opens as this music jingle plays. <laughs> Nor is there any animation for when you pick up one of these relics, or a key, or any other important item. Normally a 3D platformer would have a little animation, like a dance or some kind of choreographed moves that indicates that what you picked up is important. But here you just walk over important items like keys like it's a basic collectible, or you get a relic and just stand there. I know that sounds pedantic, but seeing your character acknowledge that you've achieved something really gives you this special feeling. Plus the simple act of celebrating adds personality to the character. 
In the end, the final boss is as uneventful as the rest. It's the witch again, who's somehow grown to huge size, despite you destroying all her gems of evil that are supposedly giving her her power. This is another platforming combat battle, but it's super simple. You jump on platforms, avoiding the lava, fight the occasional baddie, then stand on a button that drops goo on the witch. Not very inspiring. The ending also leaves something to be desired, dropping the cliche, friendship is magic, kindness is the true ultimate weapon stuff that you'd expect to find find in Kingdom Hearts. In case you couldn't tell, I'm not a huge fan of Effie. The only thing it does well is the platforming, but it's not given enough room to stand out on its own or to pull out any more tricks from its bag. Instead, the platforming is suffocated by mediocre combat and puzzles, terrible bosses and hoverboard controls, a lack of polish, bugs, and game-breaking performance issues. Effie may look nice, but it's better as a work of art than a game. Still, being the die-hard 3D platforming fan that I am, I still manage to clutch some fun from the Jaws of Disaster. I like 3D platforming, and there's some of that in here, which is pretty decent. But I'm an easy guy to please, so maybe you should take that with a grain of salt. A final word, at the best of times, Effie is a mediocre 3D platformer. Most of the time, though, it's a boring, badly designed, buggy mess that feels like it needed much more time in development than what it got. If the developers ever fix the bugs and performance issues, the Effie could be considered average, middle of the road kind of game. If you're like me and love 3D platformers and hate the drought that we're currently seeing from the genre, and you can pick Effie up on sale for 10 bucks, then there are worse ways you can spend your time. For everyone else, maybe don't bother. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. I don't enjoy ripping a game like this, but those were my honest, unfiltered opinions. I wanted to love Effie because, you know, I love 3D platformers, but it feels like the game didn't want me to love it. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.